Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and in this video, I want to take a look at the exam guide. But before we do, I just want to tell you um, something I feel that is happening with AWS certifications. So they used to be the best certifications out there. Um, uh, and they're just like so well written, the questions, the, uh, the composition of the exams. But in the last few years, they've uh, really lost quality in a lot of areas. I think it might have been because it was post COVID and they let people go. And then uh, there was a lot of uh, internal pressure for the AWS training certifications to pr uh, meet metrics, whatever those metrics were. Um, and so we started seeing really strange behavior where we had a lot of AWS employees that were pushing only AWS internal content. Uh, and then just like AWS employees uh, on the socials saying uh, like over promising what these certifications could do for you because they wanted to drive metrics. So they're basically telling you like, and I'm not lying, I'm not making this up, but they'd be like, yeah, you can get a solutions architect role in nine months if you commit yourself to these certifications. Uh, and then they would point to their internal platform, which just did not have all the information that you need to actually get a role. Um, and I think it was even recently announced that eight of us, um, like from the time of this video that, uh, you know, they, they had to lay off a lot of people in this department and that they were going to work with third party, uh, third party providers to help deliver training. Not me, even though they know me, but not me because I make a stink at them all the time to t tell them make their stuff better. Um, but you know, it's really unfortunate. Now that doesn't mean that AWS certifications are not worth your time. Uh, they still are, they're still good, but I would just say that we have to, uh, make sure that we do not drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, and buy into the marketing and understand that there are other things behind here that are in effect. Um, and it might not be for your benefit to listen uh, uh, to these folks, but they do have additional materials. Um, they have some games and stuff like that, but I can just tell you it's, it's wholly, wholly not enough uh, to help you out. Even they have like training, like hands-on training. If you can get into those programs with essays. Uh, and the big problem with that is that AWS has a solution architect role that is specific to AWS, and it doesn't look like any other SA role um, out there. And uh, the problem is, is that if you want to work at AWS, you can't even, you can't even get a job getting the SA certification. So I don't know. I just, I just want to warn you about that, and I don't want you to, um, you know, waste a lot of your time and effort um, because some people end up running out of money and they go full on in. And I just want to caution you to pace yourself um, in your journey and and protect yourself. Okay. So let's go down here and take a look at the exam guide. So if we're gonna go ahead and download the exam guide here. And what's nice is they do also have some practice exam questions. So we'll open that as well. Uh, maybe we'll look at the practice exam questions first so we can see them and look how wordy they are. And a lot of them are like this. Uh, when I saw the exam, um, I noticed that the question quality, like there was a very strict structure that they follow um, has kind of waned and it's become a little bit less uh, well worded. Um, but generally, they'll follow this pattern. Like, a company runs a public-facing three-tier web app in a VPC across multiple AZs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so the idea is that when you, when I was saying earlier in the exam guide that you have to um, get past the uh, word verbiage or word garbage, you have to look at this and say, okay, I see a three-tier public app, VPC, AZ, EC2. Like, I literally don't see the whole sentence. I just see keywords. And then I piece the architecture in my head. And then I just read the last line of what they're asking. And then I choose it. But I would say that uh, at least when I sat this exam last and what other people uh, saw was like, I wasn't seeing a lot like this, uh, these kind of questions. Um, so, you know, on our platform, we I wrote more ones that I felt reflected the current exam. These are still good um, uh, as, a, as a way to practice. So definitely utilize these and, and test your knowledge here. But make sure you do some studying before you go ahead and look at those, okay? But here is the exam guide and we'll open it up. Um, and I do not need an AI assistant. <laughs> I, they're always over here bugging me, these AI folks. But notice it says that the target candidate should have at least one year hands-on experience designing cloud solutions that use AWS. Um, you can, I guess. Um, I mean, if you did this, uh, the cloud practitioner and you want to go straight into this exam, you absolutely can. Um, uh, so I don't think you need to wait a year to do this, but obviously it can help you if you do that. We see our multiple choice, our multiple response, so that looks uh, very clear. Um, notice that, or I should say, um, consider that when AWS writes exam questions, like multiple choice, there's usually a pattern called uh, horse, zebra, elephant. 
And so imagine you had four questions. There's always an obvious qu uh, answer, which is the horse. Then there's one that could be correct, which we call the zebra, but it's not. It's too exotic of an answer. And then there's elef two elephants, which, which ones are very obviously wrong. And so I would say that uh, traditionally, the associates have kind of followed that pattern. I'd say that it's harder now, so it's not as uh, obvious as it was before. Um, but, you know, understand that is a pattern that is kind of employed. Uh, down below here, it says the exam includes 50 questions that affect your score, and there are 15 unscored. And then they talk about exam results and the scaled scoring and stuff like that. So let's go down here and take a look at our domains, our first being design secure architectures. There says access and management across multiple accounts. I didn't see much multi-account stuff. I think they're probably just talking about organizations because you can create multiple accounts, but there wasn't much multi-account knowledge in the certification, which I was a bit disappointed on, but it would definitely be in the pro. So uh, getting it here would be good. We have federated access and identity services. Uh, yep, single sign-on, I definitely got on my exam. Uh, global infrastructure, we cover that in the cloud practitioner, but they don't really, like you don't need to, like it's just implicitly known from the cloud practitioner. So it's not like there's anything new to know from that exam. So if you did the cloud practitioner, you have that. AWS security best practices, principle of least privilege stuff. Again, shared responsibility model. This is cloud practitioner knowledge. They're not asking you like, what is the shared responsibility model or uh, what is pr uh, principle of least privilege? That's the cloud practitioner. This is just general stuff you're supposed to know. And then we have skills here. So working with IAM, multi-factor authentication, the token service, um, service control policies. Like I never had any questions on service control policies so they're not that hard to figure out. Um, IAM roles. One thing I noticed, they had more directory service stuff. So um, I, I've said in the past that AWS has always lacked in directory services. I guess they're trying to make up for that, uh, competing with Azure. And so we're seeing uh, more of them focusing on their directory service offerings. So we need to know a little bit about Active Directory um, and service directory architecture in our uh, in the certification. Uh, then we have design secure workloads and applications here. So now there's some about endpoints, uh, Cognito, Guard Duty, Macy, and this is all high level stuff. Um, I do labs and show you for the most part all these things. Uh, but again, you just basically have to know what the services are. DDoS, SQL injection. This is stuff that we cover in the cloud practitioner, so it's not really I wouldn't probably put it in in this course. Uh, designing a VPC architecture with security components. So we definitely th uh, thoroughly do everything with VPC and it's something that is required for all of our associates, professionals and everything. So uh, anything that touches VPC, we'll thoroughly know. So it looks fine there. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, hybrid stuff. So ABIS Direct Connect would be something for a hybrid architecture, but we do have to talk about it, but not necessarily know how to do it because you don't have a data center. I don't have a data center. So that's kind of hard to teach in a lab. We have data security controls, um, so KMS, uh, ACM, yep, all those things are good. Now we're into domain two, so design resilient architectures. We are seeing a lot of uh, developer related services, API Gateway, REST API, SQS, Secrets Manager. This is all stuff that you would learn hands on in the developer. Um, so I will have labs, even in the solution architects, so I'm basically preparing you for those other certifications. Um, and then in those ones in particular, I might add more labs to just make the knowledge deeper for those specific services. But for the real exam, you just have to conceptually know about them. Um, but do the labs because they will cement that knowledge. ALBs, yep, so load balancing, things like that. Kubernetes doesn't really come up much in the exam. Um, so don't stress yourself about Kubernetes. And it is a big pain to utilize. It's the hardest uh, managed Kubernetes service out of all the cloud service providers out there. Um, and I think I did the lab and it, it just like, it, I, it took like two hours and it failed. And so I just brought my, uh, my older video was fine, but I just brought it over for the, from the KCNA just because it was so painful. So like, again, you know, for that, for those harder ones, you can just watch Kubernetes, you don't have to do it um, because Kubernetes and uh, Cloud Native have its own thing. And there's like a whole certification for that. Um, so they talk about multi-tier architectures. They're always just talking about the three tier, nothing complicated, microservice kind of, they kind of uh, want you to know about that. Achieve loose coupling based on requirements. We talked about decoupling in the cloud practitioner. You should do that one. When to use containers, uh, service technologies and patterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have availability, fault tolerance, uh, architectures. I honestly didn't get a whole lot of this. We cover a good chunk of this in the cloud practitioner. Um, and we obviously have it here in the, in the solution architect as well. But uh, I would say that this part, which is very important, is not that present. It's just kind of like, Again, things you implicitly should know. Um, so I, I would say that was my experience. 
We have high performing architecture. So now they're just talking about like storage. And they talk about high performance storage always uh, factors in. Um, more questions on, uh, I think I had, I don't see it here, but definitely I saw NFS or, or um, not NFS, FSX, which is a service that allows you to deploy different um, file storage types. Okay. But yeah, the point is it just goes on and on and on. And you have to know databases. You have to know a little bit of everything. Okay. So like we can scroll here forever. And here's the problem with um, AWS exams is that, and now we get to this section where it lists all of the uh, possible services. And as I scroll through them here, this is like what could get covered. And these are all the services that get covered. Do they all appear on the exam? No. And yeah, then they stop out of the scope. But could they? Absolutely yes. And that's the hard part. So like as a content creator, I want to give you a complete course. And even if they don't appear on the exam and are unlikely to, I have to cover it. Because if other courses are covering it, even though they don't really matter, then I have to cover it. Otherwise, people look at the marketing page and they go, well, Andrew didn't do you know, X service, but uh, this person did Y, so theirs is more complete, even though it's not on the exam. And this is a failing of AWS's ability to produce an exam guide that is realistic. AWS's approach to their exams is that you are expected, uh, like the exam is, is not one-to-one. -one. I'll give you an example. So if we go over to HashiCorp Terraform certification, Okay, um, let's see if I can find the uh, certification here. Certification, I forgot to type that word in here. So if you go to this one and their exam guide, uh, there's, I'm not sure how many questions there are, but the point is, is that um, for every point, every uh, topic that they cover, there's exactly one question at least on the exam. Okay, so if you do all of this, like go all the way down the list, and you study each one and you learn it, then you are well prepared for the HashiCorp exam, which I think is a good way. I like that now. Um, the way AWS works is they say, uh, here's all this content and you might only see one third of this stuff on your exam. So you basically have to study, 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 and just hope that you don't get one on AWS Firewall Manager. Um, and this just has to do again with uh, the way that AWS architectures their exams. Um, but, uh, we end up over studying and learning more stuff than we actually need to. Um, and that's just the nature of it. So just, uh, don't worry about it too much. And the way I have to approach it, I'll just show you here. Like this is my big refresh. And I actually went through here and I mapped all the stuff out and I said, okay, uh, you know, like for instance, lake formation, I didn't get any exams on, on lake formation. I see other uh, content creators between Lake Formation and their exams, and I go, should I put this in here? It's not really a huge focus. It is a point on here. Should I put two slides in it? Um, and that's the hard call, right? And this is a, also a very hard service to, uh, to do a lab on. So, uh, you know, just understand, like, I'm doing it in extreme detail and trying to get you excellent coverage the best I can. Um, and uh, this might be the most <laughs> overdone course, but the point is, is that I just want to, again, make sure you have good coverage, okay? So, you know, hopefully that gives you uh, better confidence in terms of the materials here. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just understand the nature of the exams are the nature of the exams. Um, but I'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.